Bonjour. And what a week it, it is this week. Oh my God, new comic book day. Absolute, one of those weeks. So excited. My top, at my top five books, my top five for the deep dive, I've got to say, there was four contenders for, for book of the week. See, absolutely, absolutely brilliant week. So I'm going to do my top five as usual. As usual, I've got five other ones. So I've got a top 10 here. My top 10 comics of the week. Nice spread across image. Uh, yeah, Titan. Marvel, oh, and DC, so good representation, and after that, right at the end of the video, we're going to do cover of the week, just a little bit of fun, imagining if we had money enough, pocket money enough for one, one comic, we're walking over that spinner rack, or the shelf at the drugstore, the news agents, way back when, and we've only got, and it's the cover that's going to lure us in. What's the best cover of the week that would do that? that, would do that? Just my little bit of fun at the end of the video. The deep dives obviously are going to have uh, spoilers, so please beware. But I do chapterise them, so if it's something you haven't read yet, I'll give the little tease at the beginning, but obviously it'll be a bit spoilery, because obviously I'm going to flick through them and there's some wonderful, wonderful artwork. And it's the ghost machine, it's the April is ghost machine month. So if you don't know what that means yet, Please bear with me for a little while. Just before I kick off, thank you as always to my sexy, sexy subscribers. You know how much I love you. I know people are commenting more. You know how much I love that. And I do. Get, I can get back to everyone because I don't have a, a, a million subscribers yet. I can just get back to everyone. So if you want to get involved, if you want to tell me what you're picking up, if you disagree, please just let me know. If you disagree with a book and you say, no, that was, I, I didn't enjoy that, let me know. Let's have a chat. If not, join me over on threads. Keep the old hog, same old thing, same old type it in. If you like your comics, get get yourself on the threads. I wasn't on Twitter. I don't do a lot of social media, but the comic community over on threads is a beautiful thing. They're, it's all it's all about what we love. And if there are people banging on about what they like and I don't, do you know what I do? I move on and go and find the people that are talking about the stuff I do like, rather than dampen their day. Like I did tend to do, I'll admit, I'll put my hand up, like I did tend to do when I first started this channel. But I found my happy place now, and it's concentrating more on comics than anything else that's going on around them. The original items, the main thing. So, let's get on with it. First up in my top five. This continues to be Ram V. I mean, it's, it's an issue three, but I just want to show you you guys and girls some of the beautiful design work and artwork in that. It's, it's top of the tree in, in, every, in every way. It's, it, 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 Ranvi is still rolling out the, the, the wider storyline because it's a detective thriller, but nevertheless, it's probably going to, it will make a sensational trade paper like that. Absolutely sensational. And this is sensational as well. Absolutely beautiful. Up for my book of the week. Alongside this. And this. Three releases. All by Jeff Johns. The Ghost, the Ghost Machine imprint, which, which I was uh, banging on about a little bit earlier. This is very reminiscent. This reminds me... The, the tone of it and the storytelling and the main character, this this guy, it reminds me of the first uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and, and Johnny Depp's character, old Jack, Jack Sparrow. That, that, is a, that is a character very reminiscent of that. And you'll see what, there was a particular scene in there that, that, that made me go there. And just quickly, obviously, if you're not familiar with Geiger, that's a post-apocalyptic tale. It is an issue one, but it has been. There was a mini series a couple of years ago, then a couple of special appearances. There was an 80 page giant that Ghost Machine did. But in each issue, they do give you a little uh, summing up, which is very, very good. Very good. This is, a, uh, this is set in a. Uh, on an alien world, these are all. He, he's a farmer. And what these these helmets allow you to communicate with the particular animal that you are a warden of on this planet, this terraformed alien planet. So you you become a warden. He was a farmer on Earth. 
gets a job on the new planet that's being terraformed and the the story develops from there very very good so there's three there that I was trying to choose how do I choose book of the week out of these three all, all by Jeff Johns all different art, art teams but this coming on and I 100% got my Spider-Man fix from this book it is set back in the day which you might think makes it easier to tell the story but by when in J.M. DeMatteis's hands he does make it look easy but do you know what he was the guy I don't know if you remember who done a lot of in the early 90s I think it was the Osborne saga or the Osborne legacy one of those so he knows his way around the Green Goblin and the Osborns but what this is this story is set a month or two before the appearance of the Green Goblin and that's all I'll say there will be spoilers in, in there, but I mean, I've kind of, well, you can see Green Goblin on the, on the cover and you know it's a, a back in the day story because of the style of Green Goblin. But so much has been written from the time he got bitten by that spider and those first few years that it surprised me when JMD managed to, to just squeeze another another story in and he's done some beautiful stuff there in conjunction with the artist that I've never seen before so if you want to join me in that one uh, please do after the scroll uh, but before that now I've got this in my also reigns because I haven't read this issue three but I have read issue one I've picked up all three issues thanks to uh, my old mate Paul comics and fantasy in home church Essex where I pick all my new stuff up from he dug out an issue one for me because I saw I saw the issue two on the shelf there and the art the artwork drew me in I don't know how I missed this and because it's Titan the quality shines through like I say I did read issue one got off to a fantastic start all of your classic fantasy story tropes set with beautiful artwork based on a computer game I'm not a gamer so all I can do is tell you what the comic's like. And it, it just says everything you expect on the tin of a comic called Dark Souls. Same as this one. Still a beautiful Max Max Fury, Fury Mara. Max Fury Mara's artwork on this is, is absolutely stunning. Beautiful artist. And every time I get Rick, Rick Remender, you know he can deliver a story. I think I've mentioned all seven issues of that, and I think I've mentioned all 17 issues of this continues to be a quality. I, I just love this book. And it will it, it'll be a it'll be a comic I'll go back to again and again, to be fair. You in a way it's an easy read, but that that kind of doesn't do it justice, calling it an easy read. Because there's a there's a lot in there and the storytelling's great, the artwork's great. Just 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 love that book. Doctor Strange, Jed McKay continues to impress. And I like the fact that they ended the story, the storyline of the, 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 the fantasy role-playing game set in the real world, like in the, with, with magic involved. They 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 didn't keep it going for eight issues. They didn't stretch it out, they just went, oh, here's a couple of issues, storyline with uh, Doctor Strange and Clear. Love them for that. Pascal Ferry and Jeb McKay are doing a, a top-notch job on that. It was a little, at first, I didn't know which way to go with it, but I think I've settled down now. I think I've settled down into that that storm, that team-up. And the last one, talking of team-ups, Zdarsky and Jimenez on Batman is a beautiful thing. And, and, what, and what a cover. I've got to say, that's a great cover. It'll be in the cover of the week, but I don't know whether it will get... Will it get the highest award that, that comic books can achieve, which is a Geeky Old Hog Cover of the Week award? You will have to join me after the scroll and see. I don't often do that. <laughs> I don't often do that hook and tease, do I? But I don't know where that come from. Anyway, please join me after the scroll to have a deeper, lovingly longer look at my top five after the scroll. Mm. 
Okay, we'll get straight into it with the one hand, Ram V, Lawrence Campbell on, on the artwork, Lee Luffridge on the covers. Again, a great uh, uh, colours, sorry, not covers, the co a great cover. It, it's got that Jim Steranko, look him up if you've never heard of him. Back in the 60s, did uh, Nick Fury for Marvel, among among other things. But Steranko was a, a great artist. I won't go into that here because this is all about new comics. Such a moody, atmospheric artist, Lawrence Campbell. He, he's really well suited to Ram V's story on this. Love, love the fact that we are in the far-flung future, but it's it's still looking like modern day <laughs> alien territory the the title for this chapter of the story is, is nothing to do with aliens but it's, it really does suit you, you know to pluck two words out of the out of the story out of the storyline out of what someone says and, and calling it out is, is, is great obviously the the, the storyline involves this conundrum of this code the one hand at the end and what the our main protagonist, the detective, is, is trying to find out. And he put someone away years ago, and he's gone back to visit him in this issue. And I only want to show the beginning of it, the opening of it. So he goes back. We don't know what's going to happen. You think, well, what, what is going to happen here? What is he going to find out from the bloke he put away? Because the, mur the murders he put him away for are now re are, are recurring again. So did he put the right man away? Now, this is the bit. Now, it, this is spoilers. If you're going to get this, you know, you, you might flick through this in the shop, but this is what the impact of what was going on here. It's all standard stuff, I know. There's not much exciting going on. Until he turns round and gives him a look, and the Ram V's dialogue leads you up to this look from the guy. And then you realise, you see, look, just the, the, the shift there, and you realise what's going on. The door's already shut. And then, but what I like is the way that the panels go into the code that is the main design aspect of the story. And then from there, goes into this. I just... And, and then, then you've got these images in silhouette, just splattered with the, obviously with the blood of what's going on. Loved it, loved it for that. And then obviously you, you've, got, you've gone from comic panels to, to the code and then straight into the blood soaked code. And we're back to, you know, back, back to square, well, back to the story. So great as you can see great artwork it's not a great deal more i can show you apart from that i just loved i just loved the impact of that how it drew me in how it drew me in as the reader um loved it thoroughly recommend that's a trade paperback if you're not picking that up now look at this for a cover guys and girls look at that now if you obviously she isn't in this issue he is Piggy, Mr. Piggy, but these characters were all introduced in the 80 pager that they done as a as a prelude to this. I think it was the 80 pager, or there was something else that they released, an annual or something like that, where they introduced uh, Rook, Guy Go and Redcoat, like the, the three comics I'm gonna go through. But J Jason Fabok's artwork is, is sensational, and I haven't heard of him before, so forgive me, Jason, if you're watching, and viewers, as you're listening. And watching because I'm sure he hasn't just come out of the you know come out of the firmament and delivered stuff like this I'm sure he must have done stuff before maybe he's worked for DC but perhaps someone can let me know in the comments please because I'd really like to to have a look at any anything he's done to be fair classic sci-fi throughout great idea about these helmets and you can control you know I am rock and he's given, Jeff Johns has given these three individual books, he's given them a, 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 a decidedly different tone. This is, this is all of your sci-fi on an alien planet in an alien environment kind of, kind of tropes. Like I say, as you can tell, you know, look at this fantastic artwork. So, so detailed, very, very rich. If you're going to build a world and it's going to be, and, and the storyline's going to be about nature, then... My God, this was a, 
uh, Jason Fabok is certainly delivering on, on that level. And also, on every level, look, ar architectural stuff, the tech stuff. You're brilliant. Moody. So, thoroughly enjoyed, enjoyed this. Look at that. What a great artist. Love this stuff. Brilliant. But that gives you a flavour of what's in store. Our main guy and his mate, actually. Let me just show you. Here's his mate, Piggy. <laughs> That's his mate, Piggy, who can control the pigs. Here he is. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> Oh, uh, there we go. There we go. A lot of fun. And so, I say fun. I mean comic fun. Comic reading fun. Obviously, the story isn't fun. And you can, you know, all new ongoing series. You can, thanks to the professionalism of everyone at Ghost Machine, they give you a little pricey. So you could, you can start this this issue one. But I do recommend you search out. And it was, there was all everything. Guy, because it's been Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. So, which is absolutely superb. It's been superb from day from day one. And it, it, it's obviously his ongoing adventures. But what they have cleverly done, what because because Jeff Johns is no, is no amateur. Look at that for artwork. There's his his faithful dog. <laughs> but uh, you know, someone dead on the horse, someone dead on the ground. You know, <laughs> someone on fire from where he's one of his and things went through him, someone he's, who he's touched with his face on his hand, someone hanging off the old dead. You know, that's, it's like a proper post-apocalyptic western. I've got a, um, a flashback here, you know, someone saying, Dad, Dad, but it's clearly not this, this kid that's, that's being um, held hostage. But what, getting back to what Jeff Johns has cleverly done, he's, he's introduced a companion. For, for Tarek, for for the for our main for our main character, because having a laconic central main character can get very boring very quickly. So what they've done is they've brought in this new character, which is going to be the readers the it's going to be our in to the journey. Because we, we aren't going to get a lot, unless it's going to be backstory, you know, he turns green and, and, and kills people. He's, he's got a mission, and I am oversimplifying things, but my main reason for kind of showing, you know, as always, Gary Frank is awesome at everything. The action, just absolutely spot on. His style seems to just develop minutely over over time, and I'm still I'm still loving it. This is a violent, you know, the, the, the post-apocalyptic violence. This this one played very very straight, same as the other one. But good, it's good, yeah, it's good sci-fi. And the the colouring as well. I think we've got to give the colourist a shout out, and I think I have done before. Brad Ann, of course, Brad Anderson's colours on on this. I'd love to see how this. I'd love to see how how this artwork. Is transferred from Gary Frank's. Are these, does, does he leave this pencil and leave it to the colourist to colour it in in the green inks? And I don't know. I'd love, I'd love to see the, the the beginning, middle, and end of this because it, it's it's brilliant stuff when he turns into the well, let's call it the monster. But even stuff like in, inside there was that down to Brad Anderson or or, or was there pencils there? Love it. Love it, sensational. Like I say, and you can see why now I was struggling to find my book of the week out of this lot. Because when we get to this one, now this, Jeff Johns, is relaxing and he's got his tongue firmly in his cheek. And again, look at this by Brian Hitch. Look at this wraparound cover. Now, a lot of this isn't in this issue going on. But, actually, most of it is. But a lot of it, and obviously it just sets the mood, you know exactly where you are, you know exactly what to, uh, to expect. Love it. Is that Annie Oakley? I don't know. Who are these? I don't know. Well, I do now, some of them. Yeah. 
I won't give too many spoilers away. Straight in. Straight in, we know where we are. Now, there was only one tease, so you don't really have to have got that. Eight. I think it was an 80 page. Um, the red coats are coming. Arm yourselves, all of them. <laughs> They're already there, look. <laughs> Straight away, within the first two pages. And then here, here they go, re ready to, to beat this guy up. And then something, and I, like I said before, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. So if you're looking forward to this, please, please turn away. Cause I don't want to, to spoil your fun of this. But I love the way they did. They just introduced this at the bottom of this page. And then you turn over and it's all gone completely bonkers. This isn't 1775, like revolutionary America. What's going on? Basically, what's going on is the Founding Fathers used Native American magic. That's the premise for this. Somehow, our main character here, whose name eludes me. You know what I'm like with names. Oh, they do tell you his name at the beginning, I think. Redcoat. Let's call him Redcoat. Here he is. Now, this is what reminds me of the Pirates of the Caribbean, because the first time we see our main character, oh, Simon Pure, that's it. So Simon, our main character, Redcoat, he's running. And it does, that, that, that seems to remind me of a scene in Pirates of the Caribbean, I don't know why. And he is firmly in the mould of Jack Sparrow, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's, it's a great character who is immortal. You'll have to read the comic to find out why. Here we go. <laughs> um, I don't think the British are the British to blame. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we're the bad guys in this. But anyway, he's having a blast with this story. Is Jeff Johns, and the other bit. I'll I'll skip a few bits rather than flip through the whole thing. Look at that. Brian Hitch can deliver, can't he? He just can't draw small, can he? That boy. He just can't do it small. I love him for that. Love him. And there's another scene. He meets this character who I won't reveal. You know, I'll leave, leave you some things to find. So he goes to a tavern where he's obviously been before. And <laughs> look at the face on it. He's all, you know, what a sight for sore eyes. And, she, you know, she's not happy. Then we go back in time. Uh, no, we go forward in time. You know, I deserve that. 1820, look, and that probably, liar, look, scoundrel, liar, thief. We're right up, we're right up to date now with this one. So, uh, again, reminding me of Jack Sparrow, and uh, I could see a film with this bit of being played by, by Johnny, uh, Johnny Depp playing the character. Not that he's blonde and six foot three, but you know what I mean. And again, Brian Hitch can't do it small, but my God, he gets it all in there. And again, another masterclass on detailed artwork detailed comic comic book graphic storytelling masterclasses from brian hitch from gary frank and jason fabok on these three books they're absolutely sensational can't recommend them enough but but suddenly so i'm struggling but suddenly this one come along and give me my spider-man fix i've really been missing of, you know, I know Spectacular Spider-Man come along was was a decent, was was a great comic. This though, look, and J.M. Dematis has, has been writing comics for thirty odd years, and my God, he, if there's a character he, he wrote Craven's Last Hunt as well, I believe. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Across you know the uh, Spider-Man crossover back in the day. And he's got, this is set, look, quick recap, nine panels, as if we didn't know. But it does lead us into where and when we are in the storyline. And I love the artwork on this. Um, an unusual name, Michael Sta Maria. So I don't know what that Sta dot is for. Perhaps, again, someone can let me know in the comments. Or it might be a shortened, I don't know, shortened, perhaps it's a really, 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 really long name. Anyway, great, what was the name again? Michael Maria. Let's just say Michael Maria for now. Lovely artwork. Sue Spider-Man and the old school Spider-Man brilliantly. 
this is a post green a, a pre green goblin monster who's been experimented on character who's been experimented on and the scene unfolds from there a mysterious compadre in crime now these are the bits which I found so beautiful and I really did JMD has really really encapsulated something here with the young with a 15 year old Peter Parker and Aunt May and Uncle Ben's just passed away and how they are trying to deal with it now if you have if, if you have had bereavements in, in, the, in your family and all that, which I am obviously sorry for. I've had my own. And he was, JMD must have as well, because he's spot on with this. And obviously it's Spider-Man and you've got the overdue bills and piling the drama on. But I thought they were poignant, quiet, beautiful, these moments. You know, there's, there's talk when it needs to and made good use of the narration, which I'm normally not the biggest fan of. But JMD, in JMD's hands, he makes it look easy, and he makes me love narration. And it's Spider-Man's back, and it's in that era, you know, there's a little bit of an old school feel to it. Here we go, look who else is back, obviously. And, you know, it's just leading up. I suppose it's that tension, you, you know, you, you, you're, you're probably, JMD is probably relying on us to know how this story all pans out. And he is talking from the future, and this is set in the past. So where it goes, nobody knows. And this is the early days. He goes to a kid's party and finds out, you know, this kid's just not having it. He's not having that this is the real Spider-Man. It's just someone, and he's, he goes, ah, oh, look, I'm done. But the mum tells him that he's had his, his, the boy's suffered his own loss. And it's just a nice way of giving us the young, angry Peter Parker coming to terms with what he can do and how he can affect lives. Yeah, great, a great. If you love, if you like Spider Man, even if you don't, actually, that is a really well told story for someone who has who's never even heard of Spider Man before and doesn't even know the which which makes it top notch. And you don't get any more top notch than a guy who's been writing comics, good comics, for 30 odd years. So, guys, cover of the week, that's obviously got to stay there. Paolo, what's the second name? Paolo Sicera. That, what a great, that's a great image. Obviously, I won't show the, the wrap around, but. I've, I've just got to show, I've got to show all of these off. I mean, these are just great. Maybe that's. That stands out more because of the, the neon colouring. These may be a bit static, but I still say they are. That they're just great artwork to, to, to draw you in. You know, the animals, guns. Blimey, that would have been a spaceship. Stormtrooper, Boba Fett and Lando. Doesn't get any with the trial of Lando. At the time, I love the fact they've done that reflection in a Stormtrooper's helmet. He's got his gun there. I thought this Moon Knight cover... Is all you know, Capuccio's artwork inside. I don't think that's his art. Oh no, it's whoever that is, Paratori. Just a quick little win. I haven't done a whinge of the week, but yeah, they've got to move on with that story. Anyway, it's too much good stuff about Fury Mara, obviously, always. And I thought that fully painted art is, is creepy. And it, it says, you know, you've got the big sword, you've got the skeletal thing, the hooded cloak, everything swirling, you've got fire, ring of fire there. I mean, come on. And I thought, you know, I can't, I can't not. I, I thought that cover was great. Riddler, punchline, Joker. With the blood splattering on the bottom of Batman's cape. I love that cover. <laughs> it's not the most action-packed, but I've got to say that would make me pick that up. It may, may be a little static, but the Dark Souls, I think, yeah, that does say, oh, this is, this is, oh, this is a difficult choice. That's great, but the nice, you know, not nicely rendered, but a bit static. Apart from the neon glow and he's screaming, again, these are static covers. And I know the Spider-Man one is, but I'm keeping that there. The dogs, and I, I love, I just love how creepy that is. But 
I'm still thinking Spider Man and Green Goblin. I mean that that's a great a great fight scene. Beautiful but static again. And red coat. Sorry, mate. You know how much I love the comic. But I've got to say, I, lo I just love the cape splattered in blood. I mean, are they all dead? Did he really go to town? Has, he, has Batman really gone to town that badly? Or has he just discovered... That, I think, is... is you know, you got, it, it's not the most immediately impactful cover. But got to say... That would really, really in, in, intrigue me. Uh, Dark Souls has got, I think it's got to be in there. Because it, it, it sums up the fantasy, you know, Dark Souls. You've got, like I say, Ring of Fire, the Blade, the Skeletons. But I am going to go. I'm sorry, I'm, but I'm, I am going to go with that. And I know I've said about some of the others are a bit static. And I know that is, but... It's Spider-Man and Green Goblin, guys. And the comic is, is spot on. Is, pardon the pun, sensational. <laughs> so, that's my cover of the week. If you've bared with me so all the way through, thank you so much. Let me know in the comments what you've been buying, what you haven't been buying. If you disagree with me, agree with me. Please get involved. I do love it, and I do get back to everyone. And until next week... I will bid you all adios. Mm -hmm.